This is the EU. Today we will be delving into the depths of the European Union's emission trading system, often referred to as the EU ETS. This system has become a paramount instrument in combating climate change and reducing greenhouse gas emissions in Europe. So without further ado, let us embark on this adventure to understand the EU ETS and its profound impact. The European Union has long been at the forefront of global efforts to address climate change. Established in 2005, the European Union emission trading system is the cornerstone of the EU's commitment to achieving a low-carbon economy. With such a vast and diverse region, coordinating climate change efforts can seem like an insurmountable task, but the EU ETS has proven to be an efficient and effective way to manage greenhouse gas emissions. Now let's have a short introduction. To comprehend the EU ETS, we need to grasp its core principles and mechanics. The system operates on a cap-and-trade basis, meaning the total amount of permissible emissions is capped and companies are allocated allowances that they can trade. This creates a market-based approach where emissions have a financial value, providing an incentive for companies to reduce their emissions. The cap is aligned with the EU's overall emissions reduction targets, ensuring a gradual decrease over time. To maintain flexibility and accommodate the intricacies of different sectors, the system encompasses various mechanisms such as auctions, free allocations, and a comprehensive monitoring system to verify emissions. This is hoped to incentivize the transition into clean, renewable energy sources. In addition, some of the revenues gained from fines and selling emissions allowances are allocated to the EU's Innovation Fund and Modernization Fund. Businesses are allowed to claim money from these funds to invest in innovation and energy transition, making them more efficient. How effective is the EU's ETS? Now that we have a basic understanding of the EU ETS, let's explore its impact and effectiveness. Over the years, this system has become the largest carbon market globally, leading the way in mitigating climate change. By setting a price on carbon, it incentivizes companies to invest in cleaner technologies and implement sustainable practices, fostering innovation and green growth. The EU ETS has been instrumental in reducing emissions across the European Union. Independent studies have shown that the system has successfully contributed to a significant decline in emissions in covered industries. Through the cap and trade mechanism, it encourages market players to find cost-efficient ways to lower emissions, ultimately leading to a greener and more sustainable future. Between 2005 to 2021, firms covered by the ETS reduced their emissions by 35%. This helps protect health by reducing the chance for respiratory diseases to develop and alleviate some pressure on healthcare services. Increased efficiency means firms have less costs and thus make more profit. Extra profits can be used to stimulate further investment, which can create a positive multiplier effect and lead to economic growth. Moreover, efficient firms may have surplus allowances which can be sold for extra revenue, making the firm more profitable. The success of the ETS has led to the creation of parallel programs in other areas of the world, such as certain states in the USA. Many hope this can act as a foundation for a global project that helps reduce global emissions and subsequently slow down climate change. Enhanced cooperation between national governments could make climate goals more realistic and achievable. What are some of the challenges facing the EU's ETS? Despite its success, the EU ETS has faced its fair share of challenges. One significant obstacle has been ensuring consistent carbon pricing that reflects the true societal cost of emissions. There can also be times where we see severe fluctuations of the price of emissions permits. In early 2009, the price of pollution permits was traded around Euro 10 per metric ton of carbon. By March 2023, the price had risen to €96.92 per metric ton. These fluctuations create uncertainty for firms looking to invest in cleaner energy sources. Additionally, some industries argue that the system puts them at a disadvantage in the global market, as competitors from non-EU countries don't face similar carbon constraints. Many critics have argued the ETS has increased costs for businesses and therefore created cost-push inflation, reducing the purchasing power of consumers. Low-income households may be left more vulnerable to a higher cost of living, which widens inequalities. 
Inequalities can lead to severe social problems such as crime and deprivation. There are also fears higher cost of living could lead to social unrest within the EU, similar to the Yellow Vest movement in France, seen in 2018, which started as a protest against proposals for a new diesel tax in France, seen in 2018, which started as a protest against proposals for a new diesel tax in France, before ballooning to include other political grievances and widespread riots. The success of the ETS has been disputed by various environmental groups. Environmental pressure group Greenpeace has said the ETS could harm poorer households with no guarantees of meaningful emissions cuts. The ETS scheme only covers around 40% of the EU's total greenhouse gas emissions, thus any reduction in emissions within the ETS is unlikely to substantially the lower overall level of emissions. There is also little evidence that the ETS in itself caused the reduction in emissions. Rather, Many believe the reduction in emissions were caused by improved energy efficiency and global economic downturn post-2008. Some critics have also highlighted the risk of carbon leakage caused by ETS. This is where firms relocate their production processes away from the EU to avoid environmental regulations and lower costs. This can create structural unemployment within the EU, reducing economic growth, as well as potentially hurting the current account equilibrium. What does the future hold for the EU ETS? As we look ahead, it is crucial to understand the future trajectory of the EU ETS. The European Union's commitment to the Paris Agreement and its goal of becoming climate neutral by 2050 will undoubtedly shape the future development of the system. Discussions are underway to further align the EU ETS with these ambitious targets and extend its scope to sectors currently excluded, such as maritime and aviation. Moreover, the EU ETS is expected to play a vital role in shaping global climate action. Its success serves as a model for other countries and regions, inspiring them to adopt similar market-based systems to tackle emissions. The EU's leadership in this area could pave the way for a more concerted and collaborative global effort in combating climate change. However, on a global scale, the ETS is unlikely to make a meaningful impact on reducing the impacts of climate change. Unless more nations also start implementing similar projects, global emissions will continue to increase. Some of the world's largest polluters, such as China and India, are infamous for loose environmental laws and creating copious amounts of greenhouse gases. In conclusion, it is truly remarkable how the European Union emission trading system has revolutionized the fight against climate change within the bloc. Through its market-based approach and innovative mechanisms, it has harnessed the power of economics to drive sustainability and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. As we stand on the precipice of a crucial decade in combating climate change, the EU ETS represents a beacon of hope and a testament to the transformative potential of collective action. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of the EU ETS. If you found this video insightful, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. As always, we encourage you to engage in the comments section below, sharing your thoughts and experiences with the EU ETS or any related topic. Until next time, stay curious and environmentally conscious.